tree. Um, you need to not treat because there's no way you can breed bees that can survive if you're treating because all you're doing is, is not treating. Not treating. Exactly. Yeah. Not well, let's let, let's just look at this from from a breeding point of view. If I want to breed bees that can survive the mites, I can't do that as long as I keep treating for the mites. All I'm doing is breeding bees that can survive while I'm treating the mites. I'm not breeding bees that can survive when I don't treat the mites as long as I keep treating for them. All I'm doing is propping up bees that are genetically incapable of surviving. That doesn't help. Randy uh, Oliver said, if you're not part of the genetic solution to this problem, to this, then you're part of the problem. And I think that's a fact. I think anybody who's treating is part of the problem. They're propping up bees that can't survive. And, that's, and that just keeps perpetuating the problem. So a bank bail out this. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Number four. There you go. Number four, you, you need to do natural food. Because the, what a lot of these people are doing that are collapsing is they're feeding artificial, po artificial pollen substitutes. They're feeding sugar syrup. Now, I'm not, saying you shouldn't, syrup. I'm not saying you shouldn't feed bees when they're hungry. And, and there's nothing wrong with feeding them sugar syrup when, when you need to feed them. But there's a difference between, here, here's a typical management, two, two management scenarios, OK? And, and I'll, I'll contrast them. One of them is you steal every last scrap of honey coming into winter, and then you feed them a bunch of syrup to try and get them enough to get through the winter. That's what I'm saying you shouldn't do. What you should do is leave them enough honey to get through the winter. Because honey is a whole different a whole different pH. Honey is very acid, and syrup is very base. Sugar syrup is not anywhere near in the same ballpark of the pH of, of honey. What's the pH of honey? The pH of honey is around between 4 and 5. The pH of syrup is about 6.5. Something like that. Well, if you bring the pH down, it's well, I'm not saying that the pH is the only issue, but I'm saying it's an issue because all the bacteria that live in the hive are part of this whole ecosystem of the hive, and when you shift the pH, you shift that whole ecosystem because the bacteria that survive well at 6.0 aren't the same as the ones that survive well at 4 and 5. And so now you've shifted what the microorganisms living in the hive are because you've shifted the pH. I'm not saying that's the only issue. There's also other micronutrients in honey. Obviously, if all of us thought that sugar syrup was just as healthy as honey, we'll just go buy sugar and make sugar syrup. And raise bees, right? You also shifted the temperature of the hive for the uh, room nest. Yeah. And, and that has, has a lot of ramifications for Varroa and why they go to the drone versus the worker group to call the soil thermal, where there's going to be a certain amount of heat and you get too much heat in the worker group by being compacted. Now, so, here in Florida, pretty much your bees are going to produce honey year round. There's yes. always something. There's you always can something you can pull so, year round. I mean, basically, year -round. you're going to always have honey in the hive, no matter if you pull some or pull some. Just about. There are two, there are two exceptions to that, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain one. You package because they have nothing. Right, right. So you need to do something with them. If you take honey, if you take some of your honey and water it down and give it to them to start with, that's fine. You can do that. You can do a, a, a a sugar water mix. Not cane juice. Cane juice. cane juice, yeah, a little bit, you know, but you gotta water. Don't ever give it to them directly like that. If you can avoid it, water it down a little bit because it's that strong. It, there are the ramifications that happen, especially to a hive that's just started. You want to encourage them to build wax so they can store their own. Okay? The idea is to get them off your dependency. So not just sit there and give them the free food buffet so they don't have to work for it. You know, lazy, lazy bee keeping is one thing. Lazy bees are something else. <laughs> yeah, I don't live here, but I would never feed cane juice because it's probably going to give them dysentery. But uh, yeah. I just, I, I don't see anything wrong with feeding them sugar syrup to keep them from starving and to get a package established. I just don't think that should be your management practice. Yeah. Your management practice should be leaving honey. That's that's my opinion. Well, well, Dee, well, Dee won't feed them anything but honey. She'll go, she'll go break down those 40 barrels of honey and feed them to them. Should be honey juice cheaper. It's cheaper. It's cheaper. Yeah, but, but, well, from my point of view, gathering nectar is what bees do, but yeah, I, I should let them. So as long as there's nectar, nectar, nectar flow out there, I'm not going to be feeding them. Sorry? Nectar in what? I said, let nectar, 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 nectar flow out there. Yeah. 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 But in the beginning, when they have nothing, well, see, look, I don't, I don't know how your weather is down here. Where I am, it might get nasty for a week and they can't get out to fly because it might be cold and rainy and they just can't get out to fly. Well, if they don't have something stored up, they're going to starve. So if I put a package in a, in a hive, even if there is some stuff blooming at the time, if I hit a week of bad weather, they might starve. So I'm going to feed that package until they've got a little bit of a little bit stored up, so that if we hit a week of bad weather, they wouldn't starve. Right. And, and once they're at that point, I'm not going to feed them. So basically, you want to transfer to be natural, 
So instead of taking all the money, you just take care, right? You take, you take, yeah, take, you know. You, you have to learn in your climate how much you need to leave. That's, yeah. That, 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 how much would you leave in a van here? I normally leave, for me, I leave three mediums to a base standard, two at, a, at an absolute minimum. Um, I have some boxes with my bees that, with, if I if I have one bee and I put the second box on, they will honey out the second box and stuff. But they bees use honey like human beings do insulation on their house, and then they eat the insulation. You'll find that if you go to a feral hive, honey exists in these places in the hive: the top rows, wherever they attach to the top on, and the outside edges, a little bit on the bottom. And the brood chamber exists in the middle. Honey is thick. It's dense, and it, can, and it helps maintain the temperature. Bees keep the hive a certain temperature. Yeah, yeah. So bees keep the, the hive a certain temperature. As long as you do, and what we try to do is we try to trick the bees into making a little bit more honey for us. So as long as my bees have enough honey on top, the sides, and bottom, do what they need to, I'm usually prepared. Now, every now and then, I'll get a little greedy, especially if I know it flows on and stuff, and I may take one frame out of the side and force them to rebuild it. Occasionally, I do that to rotate out some of the frames and stuff that have been in there too long also, you know, but I won't take them all and stuff. You got, I have three boxes on a medium. That's the equivalent of two deeps, okay? So that's usually what I leave. That's usually what I leave. Anything above that, I can take, you know? So the number four would be no, no, uh, no, no artificial. No artificial. Artificial. Avoid artificial food as much as possible. artificial food. How much, uh, how many hives do you run? I have 12. How many pounds of honey do you get a year? I have to tell you, I had absolutely none I pulled last year because I ended up uh, moving my bees to a new farm and I had a small hive beetle problem that drove me through the roof and I was more concerned about dealing with that than I was about pulling the honey and stuff. So I didn't pull any last year, but I did the year before about 30 to 40 pounds of honey a hive without even trying. And I, I didn't even work that hard at it. You gotta remember, I am also a part-time hobbyist beekeeper. I have a full-time job that sends me from one side of the country to the next. So, you know, for me, selling the honey is a good thing. I'll go over this a little bit more, but I got into bees not necessarily so much because honey, but because the bees. Uh, I'm not quite the beekeeper that he is, but um, I, I like the social bees. My wife takes the honey on the last end of it and stuff, and deals with that end. Number four drinker. Any other questions for Mike? Not down here. It, 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 it depends on the forage. Yeah. It depends, it depends on, on what? Forage. What's the what's the plan? Forage. How, well, how much food oh, is there out there for? Well, yeah. availability of food for grazing, then you have to know what you're looking at and how to be uh, yeah. the whole thing itself. And how far they'll travel to get food. These will cover an area, generally an area of about two miles. No, 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 no. In this in this area they'll cover about two. Only with the blue bond. What, what, say, say you're in there's, never, there's never not a blue bond down. Okay. That's the thing. They will on average cover an area of around two miles down here. And two miles, by the way, is 8,000 acres. Yeah.